This is functions part two. In the previous video, we looked at function notation. This is an example of function notation. This is f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. And what you're often asked to do is to find a function value. f of 1 means for us to take 1 and plug it into this equation for x. Put 1 here, put 1 here. So this is 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2. So evaluating a function for a particular number is just a matter of doing the arithmetic. And you can do the arithmetic by hand or you can plug this into your calculator. This becomes 1 minus 3 plus 2 which just equals 0. So f of 1 equals 0. f of 0 is asking to do the same thing. Put 0 in for each of these. 0 squared is 0. Minus 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 just gives us 2. So that was evaluating a function. But what this graph is going to show you is a visual on what you're doing when you are evaluating a function value. f of 1, remember what this is, f of x is the same thing as y. So that the number inside the parentheses here is your x value and the result, this output number over here, is your y. So 1, 0 is an ordered pair. Specifically, the 1 is right here, go over 1, and the value that corresponds on the graph is 0. When I have f of 0 equals 2, that means I'm looking at the ordered pair 0, comma 2. Over 0, up 2 is that particular point. I could also evaluate f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, it doesn't matter. I just happen to choose these because they came out nice and neat on the graph. But you can evaluate f of whatever number you want to do. You can do f of a half if you want to do the arithmetic on that. And then find the corresponding point. This is over a half, up, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly on the graph what that point is. It looks like maybe it's four-fifths or three-fourths or something like that. Sometimes there is a graph drawn and you are asked to evaluate. There is no function that doesn't tell me x squared plus 3x plus 2 or something. There's just a graph drawn, and you're asked to evaluate. We're going to do what we just did a second ago and use the graph. f of 1, remember, f of x is y. The number inside the parentheses is our x, and what you're being asked to do is to find the corresponding y value. So x is 1, then I go up to the corresponding y value. Is that point right there? That point is 1. f of 3 means to go over on your graph, 1, 2, 3, find the corresponding y value, which is right there, which is negative 1. So I can ask for f of anything that's going to fall on this line. The next thing you're asked for is to go the other direction. For what value of x is f of x equal negative 2? We're looking for the x value this time. We know the y value, we want to find the x value. So on my graph, I try to find y equal to negative 2, which is right here. Go across. It's this point. What's the x value that will land me there? Over 1, 2, 3, 4. So the value of x is 4. Same idea for what value of x is f of x equal to negative 1. Go down 1 and just keep going across until you land on the graph. I land right there, and the x value that will get me there is 3. Here's a couple more definitions we have to look at and use these definitions on the graphs coming up. The x-intercept is exactly what it sounds like. It is where the graph crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. You already know domain and range. I'm just repeating these. Domain basically is the x values. Range is the y values. If you happen to get things confused like that, remember your points are in the form x comma y, which is alphabetical, and d for domain comes before R for range alphabetically, if that'll help you keep those straight. So here's my graph. This is a graph I did on a computer grapher. The little arrows right there I put on there to remind you that these graphs continue. When you, when you look at your graph and calculator, there are no arrows showing on that screen, and you might think the graph is just the size of your screen, and that's not true. It continues forever to the left, forever to the right. All right, the x-intercept is where this graph crosses the x-axis. Well, here's my x-axis right here. 
Does my graph cross the x-axis? No. So we say there is no x-intercept, or we could say none. Don't put zero. Zero would imply it crossed at zero, and it didn't cross at all. This is my y-axis, and where this graph crossed the y-axis is right here, which is at 1. So x and y intercept is just a matter of looking at your graph and naming those. It's entirely possible to have more than one x-intercept. You can only have one y-intercept if you're dealing with a function. Domain. These are your x values. What x values, if I had made a big old t-chart, what x values are these? Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. I am using any positive value I want to get this curve because it keeps on going. Same thing going to this side. I'm using any negative value I want. There is not a number that we have not used, and that means our domain is all real numbers. And how we write this is in interval notation because this is the easiest way to write it. If it's all real numbers, it is from negative infinity to infinity. Remember on infinity that they get the curved parentheses. The range are your y values. What is your smallest y value? Well, it's right here at 1. What happens to those y values? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, continues forever and ever up. It means your range is from 1 to infinity. Now, we know infinity gets the curved parenthesis. We have to decide what to put on this 1. That is a filled in dot. There is a point at 1. So that means our range does have a square bracket to begin the interval notation. Next one, x-intercept. Well, here's my x-axis. I have touched right there. So the x-intercept is negative 2. Y-intercept is where we're crossing the y-axis, and it also happens to coincidentally be negative 2. Domain refers to the x values. This is like the curve we had a second ago. This continues forever and ever and ever to the left, forever and ever and ever to the right, which means our domain is all real numbers. So in interval notation, that is negative infinity to infinity. Our range, though, has been cut off because we have no positive values up here. This goes forever down into the negative infinity, y value-wise, and it reaches a peak here at 0. So our range is from negative infinity to 0, including 0, so we do get the square bracket on that. All right, here's another one, x-intercept. Does this cross the x-axis? No, it does not. y-intercept, it crosses right here, so the y-intercept is 2. Here's one where the domain is not all real numbers. We don't have any negative x values being used. The first x value being used is right here. What is that x value? That is 0. Where does it go? It goes out this way forever and ever, which is infinity. Infinity gets the curved parentheses, but this does get a square bracket. The range is going to begin right here. The lowest y value is 2, and it continues forever and ever height-wise. So it's also infinity, and it has a square bracket. There's another one. X-intercept is where we're crossing the x-axis, which is right there. So the x-intercept is 3. Y-intercept is right here, which is negative 1. Your domain, your least x value is right here, 0. This does not continue forever. It continues over here. The x value that corresponds to this point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, as far as the symbols go, 4 has an open circle on it, so that's a curvy parenthesis. Right here at 0, that was colored in, therefore that is a square bracket. Same kind of idea works with the range. The least y value we have is negative 1 with a bracket. And it's going to reach a height of 2 with a curve because that's an open circle.